Hi guys, it's Dan from Dan's Best Tech. Does an eGPU used with the base 2020 $1,300 13-inch MacBook Pro make sense? Let's talk about that. So let's say that you are someone who does light video editing with 4K H.264 video. You want to be able to edit on the go with a super light MacBook Pro that weighs around 3 pounds. But when you dock your laptop at home to take advantage of a larger 4K monitor, you want more graphical power for important things like games. What I have here is the cheapest $1,300 13-inch 2020 MacBook Pro. Although Apple finally fixed the keyboard and doubled the base storage, a lot of people are upset that it only includes an outdated 8th gen Core i5-8257U processor with the outdated Iris Plus 645 integrated GPU. In this video, I'm testing how an eGPU helps with gaming. And I suppose I can show if it helps with editing video in Final Cut Pro, but mostly gaming. So let's talk specs. The multi-core performance on the base $1,300 MacBook Pro is only 10 to 15% weaker than the $1,800 MacBook Pro. If you care about raw performance, the $500 upgrade is not really worth it to me. Who really needs two extra Thunderbolt 3 ports, double the RAM, and double the storage? The things that come standard on the $1,800 MacBook Pro. But on the other hand, if you get the same 512GB storage and 16GB RAM upgrades on the base MacBook Pro, it will increase the cost up to $1,600 only $200 less than the $1,800 version. Okay, to be honest, maybe I can't afford to spend the money to buy this upgraded $1,800 MacBook Pro, so I stuck with the base model for my eGPU testing. Now on to the graphical performance. The Geekbench 5 OpenCL scores for the base model's integrated Intel Iris Plus 645 are 6600, and spending the extra $500 to get the advanced MacBook Pro with the latest Intel Iris Plus gets an OpenCL score of around 8400. But neither of these scores are great no matter how you look at it. So instead of spending an extra $500 to get an OpenCL score of 8400, I instead spent $300 more to buy the Razor Core X and $440 more to buy the Radeon RX 5700 XT. Then the Geekbench 5 OpenCL score shoots way up to 37,000. That's more than five times the graphical performance over the base $1,300 model, and more than four times the graphical performance over the $1,800 model. And finally, that's almost double the graphical performance over the $2,300 16-inch MacBook Pro's 23,000 OpenCL score with its AMD Radeon Pro 5300M. I know a lot of people say that eGPUs aren't worth it, but when Apple charges an extra $500 for such a subtle boost in graphical performance, then a $740 eGPU doesn't sound that bad especially when it gets almost double the graphical performance over the more expensive $2,400 16-inch MacBook Pro. Sure, the $1,800 MacBook Pro has two internal fans over the single fan in the $1,300 version, but when you're using an eGPU, most of the heat is generated outside the laptop during graphical intensive tasks anyways. Additionally, if you want to upgrade your eGPU later down the road, you can do that, something you can't do on the integrated graphics on these laptops. So as far as gaming goes though, I tested Fortnite at 720p lowest settings with and without the eGPU. The game ran in the 80s without the eGPU, but increased almost threefold to the 220s with the eGPU. That's a massive improvement. Additionally, Fortnite isn't even really optimized in macOS as it is in Windows. So stay tuned for a follow-up video where I do a thorough in-depth gaming review on this thing using both macOS, Windows, and Parallels and let me know in the comments which games you would like to see me test. Now let's finally talk about Final Cut Pro. Does it perform better with the eGPU? Sure. But I haven't had any problems editing my H.264 4K 30fps videos using just the internal integrated GPU either, which is great. I can do all my editing on the go if necessary, and with the eGPU it feels just as snappy. Additionally, I love taking advantage of the extra screen real estate from a larger 4K monitor to edit video. During exporting, my 12 minute long clip only took 10 minutes to export with the internal integrated GPU. When using the eGPU, the export time decreased to 8 minutes. Definitely an improvement, but like I said, Final Cut Pro works just fine for me even without the eGPU. But I do admit, 256GB of storage for 4K video editing might not be the best idea since my 12 minute long video with all the raw footage was 150GB in size. So are there any downsides to using an eGPU? Yes, of course. Usually you lose anywhere between 10 to 30% graphical performance when using an eGPU. In our case, we're losing half. 
The good news is that Max Tech's video linked down in the description below describes how to get some of this card's performance back. Additionally, some of you might be thinking that you could just build a PC with the graphics card inside to get 100% of the graphical performance, and you'd be right, but then you'd have to run Windows or install a Hackintosh. Another downside is that when you're on the go, you will obviously not have the graphical performance boost, but as I said, I can still scrub and export my 4K videos smoothly without it. It'll just take a few minutes longer to export. Additionally, the best thing about using a laptop is that you can simply unplug it and go. But if you haven't used a laptop for a while, it's sleeping and the monitor is off, you have to turn on the monitor, log into your account, and then eject the eGPU before you can unplug it. Or you can just unplug it and worry about the consequences later. If you have an eGPU, do you follow the protocol or do you just unplug the eGPU without ejecting it? Would a physical eject button on an eGPU be something you guys would be interested in? And the final cost is con. And the final con, Bonnie. And the final con is cost. Bonnie, stop snoring. And the final con is cost. This eGPU setup will cost you a $740 premium over the $1,300 base 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro, causing the total cost to be $2,040. The $300 Razer Core X with the $440 Radeon RX 5700 XT are not cheap. That said, for $230 more than the $1,800 13-inch MacBook Pro, you get four times the graphical performance. For $360 less than the $2,400 16-inch MacBook Pro with its AMD Radeon 5300M, you get almost double the graphical performance. And of course, there's the elephant in the room. Building a Windows PC will save you hundreds, and even some Windows laptops like the $1,450 Asus Zephyrus G14 with the RX 2060 Max-Q GPU inside will give you way more bang for your buck, and that laptop weighs in at 3.5 pounds. To conclude, do I think the base 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro is worth it? Sure, but like everyone else, I do wish Apple included the latest processors in it. Actually, if I'm wishing for things, I wish Apple made a 14-inch version that had a dedicated GPU inside and sold it for $500 less. Do you guys think Apple will ever release this magical 14-inch unicorn? But regarding this 13-inch 2020 base MacBook Pro, I do think it's fast enough even without an eGPU for my workflow, and adding the eGPU makes it one of the fastest MacBooks around for graphical intensive tasks. What do you guys think? Would you consider getting the cheaper MacBook Pro and an eGPU over the more expensive MacBook Pros? And let me know in the comments what you would like to see me test next. And finally, hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps the channel out, and I'll catch you in the next one.